I actually bought two wood stains from Hobby Lobby. I bought the golden oak stain and then I also bought the gray wood stain and I was testing this out on an extra piece of wood just so I don't ruin my project and stay tuned to see which color I used. So after testing the stain and letting it dry, I actually went ahead and went with the golden oak. I've used this color before, but I was trying to go for a lighter, um, lighter wood stain, but the birch stain that they had in the store was just too light. So I, um, so I went ahead and went with my trusted <laughs> golden oak stain as I did before in another project, except I didn't film that one. So I guess it's a win-win. So when you are using the stain, you just want to be sure that you're squeezing the contents out and then rubbing it in with the sponge brush that's um, on the top. The sponge brush applicator is really good, but sometimes there is excess stain. So at times you'll see me kind of rolling the applicator around on the edge just to even out some of the excess stain that's coming out. If you do have a separate sponge brush, you can use that. It's pretty much the same. It would be the same texture as the applicator that comes on this product. And you're going to want to go over quite a few times to get the the darkness of wood that you want. I was, I would say I went over the wood about maybe two or three times um, for each side. And then I'm using a rag to kind of wipe off the excess, but also get into the nooks and crannies that are under on the underside and on the inside of the wood edge. That way the client doesn't see that I stained the wood. Um, and so it's kind of to minimize any imperfections. So I don't have a saw. <laughs> so I ended up using my pipe cutter to basically make four indentations, one on each side of my square wood dowels. And I basically just twisted the end of the pipe cutter until it made a full indention into the wood dowel and then when I got to the last indention I will show you how I snapped the other side off and so you're going to do that indention on both sides and make sure they're the same length and once you have that you want to snap off the edge even though the edge is not even you can sand it down or you can use that I actually use the uneven edge as the bottom that was going on the inside of the of the crate so you'll see that later i actually did not buy a third square wood dowel i don't know what i was thinking i think i thought i had one so i ended up using a spare uh, round wood dowel that i already had and then just cut it with my pipe cutter as i've done before in previous projects and then with all the wood dowels, you just want to stain them and try and get them to the darkness of your crate. So then that way everything is cohesive and matches perfectly. And you want to use a rag or gloves. So then when you are twisting the dowel to get the stain all the way to the top, you want to make sure that you don't get any on your hands. Next, I'm using this Type Bond 3 wood glue that I got from Home Depot. I'm applying that to the inside of the crates in the corner. And the thing I like about using the square wood dowels is that they fit perfectly in the corner. You don't have to worry about them not being flush against the edges of the crate. So I made sure I got it all in, the, in each corner of the slats, but not to you know have any of the wood glue drip into the front of the crate because even though this dries um, fairly clear I just didn't want to have to clean that up and then risk um, taking off some of the stain and so when you have your 
wood dowel in the position that you want. You just want to hold it for five seconds. And then I bought these clamps from the Dollar Tree. They come two in a pack. So these are really great. They have a lot of tension and these are really great to use for wood projects like this. And you just want to clamp the dowel to the front of the crate and sandwich it um, as firmly as you can, as securely as you can. And then you repeat those steps on the other side. This is the round wood dowel. The only hard part about doing the round wood dowel on the top is that it does roll. And so you're gonna have to use something to secure it. A lot of people use zip ties, but I haven't been able to really figure that out. I always have trouble using zip ties. So I'm actually using a white pipe cleaner. Um, you can also use twine to secure it. And the good thing, I like using pipe cleaners because the good thing about using pipe cleaners or chenille stems, if you want to call them that, is that they also act as a um, secure way to keep the dowel in place so it doesn't roll. And all I'm doing is basically, you know, crisscrossing the chenille stem around the dowel and making sure that I'm kind of doing like a figure eight. So then that way, once I get to the last inch of the stem, I can twist it off and then hold it down. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get your garland. I actually was having trouble with this garland as well. Um, it's a different type of leaf than I've used before. Usually I use eucalyptus, but this garland I thought was gonna look better, but the stems were very, very tense, like very a very strong wire. And so they didn't, um, and they weren't really adhering with the wood glue very well, just as one long piece. So I had to actually use my wire cutters to snip off which you can't see. <laughs> uh, use my wire cutters to snip off individual stems from the gar garland and then glue each individual stem down by itself. I didn't go all the way up on the wood dowel with the stems because I wanted to leave space to add a bow. And the bow is actually going to cover up the uh, chenille stem in the next step. So I got this bow. I'm like in love with the buffalo plaid. So I just figured this was kind of a fall, almost fall baby. So I figured, you know, they have a lot of fall decorations in the store right now. So I figured it was a perfect time to buy one. Of course, I like to have a lot of these on stock just in case because it is a pattern that I love to use. And then I use the bib, to, the one of the bibs to cover up the other shoe stem. Now, the other thing you can do is add either the baby's name or a baby sign or a welcome sign to the front of the crate. I have a stash of um, babies, wood baby signs. So I'm just gluing that on the ends to the crate so then um, it gives it a little pop of color and it kind of makes the crate stand out. Then I placed a box in the inside but you can also if you're gonna give diapers you can also place diapers in the inside of the crate to give it a little more elevated um, to elevate the items that you're gonna put inside and then to cover up the box and or diapers if you're using that you want to make sure you have purchased a thin um, receiving blanket and I'm just using that to cover up the box but then also kind of stuff it in and add a little more dimension to the bottom of the box and of course it wouldn't be a Coco DIY project without something falling apart so uh, here I had to reapply my um, my stem and I will not be using these leaves again <laughs> and now it's time for the fun part so I'm just gonna let you guys kind of see the transformation here
look of the basket, an up close look of the basket. All the little shoes, all the clothes, all the teethers, bibs, and other items. And if you guys enjoyed this project, then click on your screen for more and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.